Okay, so we are continuing with determinants and continuing indeed with calculating determinants. Okay, so we got to, we calculated um, a 3 by 3 determinant, okay? And now we have how to calculate an n by n determinant. Given an n by n matrix A, the minor mij corresponding to the entry aij is the determinant of the n minus 1 by n minus 1 matrix formed by omitting the i row and jth column of A. So that's nothing but what we were doing earlier here. This is the minor of that entry. This is the minor of that entry. This determinates the minor of that entry. Okay. The cofactor, Cij, corresponding to Aij, is minus 1 to the i plus j times by the minor. So it's the minor, it's the minor with the sign, right? So, in this example we did of 3 by 3, the minor, the cofactor here, so the cofactor of this entry, the cofactor of this entry is just that. The cofactor of this entry is minus times that, because this is a, an odd entry. It's an odd entry because it's row, row 1, column 2, and 1 plus 2 is 3, which is odd. Okay. The determinant of A can be calculated by using the Laplace, or, or cofactor expansion, I don't know why it's called the Laplace expansion, along any row or column, i.e. For a fixed i, the determinant of A equals the sum, so we, the sum, oh, this is similar, this is this thing is actually, this is that, is the cofactor expansion then, okay? So the sum of Aij, so in this case, this would be the AIJ, that was then, you know, this was A11, this was A12, that was A13. AIJ times by the cofactor. The cofactor, though, is just minus 1 to the i plus j, is the, the, minus, the, the negative or positive um, bit, the negative or positive sign, and then the minor, that's what the cofactor is. Expand along any row or column, i.e. for a fixed i, so here we have AIJ, so the i is fixed, so we're expanding along the ith row. We're changing the j. The j gives the column we're in, so we're moving columns. So we're expanding along a row, going first entry in row, second entry in row, third entry in row, and so on. Okay. Or for fixed j. So now here, this is one we're fixing the j. So we're fixing the column. We're changing the i. So we're choosing a column, the jth column, and then we're going first entry in that column, second entry in that column, and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, let's A equal this. Calculate the determinant of A. Okay. So there's no, it says there's no zero entries, so expanding along one row or column will be as much work as any other row or column. We'll expand along the second row. Okay. So you have the, the determinant of A, and now, so the I, we're expanding along, a, we're expanding along a row, so this is the row formula. So the I is fixed. So here the i is 2, because we're spanning along the second row. So we have a 2 there, okay? And the i is, that's also an i, so that becomes a 2. There's an i there as well, so that becomes a 2. You know, in fact, this thing can be written slightly more simply as change the j's. You have the j's running along, the, run along all the um, columns. Then you have a 2j times, remember, the cofactor of 2j. But the cofactor is nothing but the factor of minus 1 times the minor. Okay, at any rate, you, you do this. So you, there is, j can be one, two, or three. So you have three different terms. Here you have the minors. So you have the first minor is, so depending on the second row, so the first minor is two, three, minus one, two. That's that. Then we are here. So the next minor is one, minus one, minus one, two. One, minus one, minus one, two. Then we are here. So the minor is one, minus one, two, three. One, minus one, two, three. Okay, those are the minors. Then we have the we change the we turn change the minors into becoming co, into being cofactors by adding the plus or minus sign depending. So we start here. This is row two, column one. So that's an odd entry. So we have a minus one. That means that's an even entry because they alternate, of course. So we have a one. This is an odd entry. So we have a minus one. Okay. Then we times these cofactors by the a two j the entries. So three then 1, then 1 again. Now you actually calculate this. 2 times 2, 
minus minus one times three and so on, and apparently you get this. I don't think there's any need for us to check. Okay. However, it does point say you should check that you get the same answer if you expand along another row or column. So let's do that. That seems like a more useful thing to do. So let's expand along. I'm going to choose what looks nice to me is row one, column one, because it's, because it's got all these ones in it. I like ones. Okay. So we're going to calculate the determinant now by expanding along row column one. Okay. So since it's the column that is fixed, that's column one, the column is always the second entry, so that's a one there, okay? And the row changes, so that i changes. So i is going to go from one to three, row one to row three. Then we're going to have the cofactor, and it's also cofactor, the same cofactor as the entry. Okay, that's what it is. That's the answer. Let's calculate it now. Okay. What is... So it's got three terms, right? One with i equals one, so one one c one one. One with i equals two, so that's two one c two one, and one with i equals three, three one c three one. Okay. What is a one one? A one one is a one one is one. A two one is three. A three one is minus one. Okay. Then. This is an. Then so we're working out cofactors now. So they have a, a, a positive sign or a negative sign. So this is an. Start off. We're starting off here. This is an even entry because it's row one, column one. One plus one is, is two. Just even. So this first cofactor, doesn't get a, Doesn't need an extra minus sign. The second cofactor though, the next the second one. Now we're row two, column one. So we need an, an extra minus sign. Third one stays the same. Okay. There's are the alternating signs. Now. That gives you the sign of the cofactor, now just the minor part, which is the determinants of the, the two things you get when you cross out the row and column that you're in. Okay, so we start off here, we have, so now we have the determinant of this thing, so that's 1, 3, 1, 2. The next bit, determinant of 2, 3, minus 1, 2. The next bit, determinant of 2, minus 1, 1, 1. Okay. So now let's calculate this. So we have one times this thing, so it's just this thing. So we have two, two minus three. Okay, then we have minus three times four minus minus three, so four plus three. And then we have minus one, so minus times two minus minus one, so two plus one. Okay, so this all comes to 2 minus 3 is minus 1. Then we have minus 3 times 7 is minus 21. And then we have minus 3 there. So we get that's minus 22 minus 3, so it's minus 25. Yes, indeed, that is what they got calculating it along the second row, as we'd expect. Cool. So this was a 3 by 3. We'd actually done a 3 by 3. Now we have an example of calculate the determinant of a 4x4 four four matrix. Okay, now calculating the determinant of an arbitrary 4x4 four four matrix using this method is tedious. Fortunately, there's only one non-zero entry in the second column of B, so expanding along this column greatly reduces the amount of work. We might also notice that the minus associated with the only non-zero entry in the second column is just the matrix A from the previous example. Together, these two imply that B equals 50. Make sure you can fill in the details yourself. So let's fill in those details. So B is, we're going to expand down the second column, because that's mostly zeros, so we just need the entry 2. Now that is an odd entry, because it's uh, row 1, column 2, so we have an extra minus sign. Then we want the minor of what remains, with the minor, which is the determinant of what remains, when you cross out, when you cross out the row or column, the row and column you're on. So it's 1, 3, minus 1, 2, 1, 3, minus 1, 1, 2. Okay, but they say that that's just the A, is it? 1, 3, minus 1, 2, 1, 3. Yes, that is just determinant of A, which we already know is minus 25, so this whole thing comes to 50. Okay.